This video was supported by Great Corsets Plus. After World War I, the Austro-Hungarian Empire was destroyed and a selection of new states emerged in Central Europe. Many of these states descended into war and some, like Hungary, temporarily became communist. Austria also had a large socialist urban population, notably in Vienna, which was dubbed Red Vienna. But it was a parliamentary democracy and the left-wing Social Democratic Workers' Party contended with the conservative Christian Social Party, which had support from the large Catholic and rural populations. But because Austria didn't have much of an army after the war, these groups filled the void by forming paramilitaries. The left-wing had the Republic Protection Association and the conservatives had the Home Guard. These often clashed with one another. For instance, in 1927, a nationalistic paramilitary shot at demonstrating socialists. And after the shooters were set free, many socialists went on strike and stormed buildings around Vienna. But the July revolt ended when the police opened fire and killed over 80 of them. So tensions had been high since World War I, but the onset of the Great Depression made the situation worse. Members of the Christian Social Party had largely held the post of Chancellor since World War I. But in 1930, the Social Democrat Party won the election and became the largest party in the National Council. Plus, the right wing began to divide. The Nazi Party of Austria was formed and got 3% of the vote. And, like the Landbund, who were largely Protestant conservatives, they advocated for a union with Germany. Also, the right wing Greater Germany Party broke from the Christian Party and the Home Guard in 1931 tried to take power through a putsch. So with a loss of support, chancellors couldn't maintain power for very long. In 1932, however, Engelbert Dollfuss was appointed as chancellor, leading a coalition of the Christian Social Party, the Home Guard and the Landbund, but support for him in Parliament was still split. However, in 1933, railway workers went on strike and the National Council held a vote on how to deal with it. Because of how close the vote was, the president and vice presidents resigned from their post in order to cast their vote. But Dolphus used this opportunity to disband the National Council and effectively made himself dictator of Austria. His style of rule Austro-Fascism was heavily influenced by the fascist rulers of Portugal and Italy, and he even formed an alliance with Mussolini. He banned the Communist Party, preached against capitalism, and advocated for a strong corporate state with strong ties to the Catholic Church. But the war began in February 1934, when the Home Guard in Linz, led by Emil Fay, called for the socialist paramilitaries to be disarmed. On the 12th, they searched properties held by the Social Democratic Party, but in Hotel Schiff, the socialist paramilitaries resisted and called on others to rise up and barricade themselves in the streets of cities. The rebellion spread to towns like St. Polten, Graz and Kapfenberg, and in Vienna they fought from inside the Karl Marxhof housing complex. On the first day, the socialists just clashed with the right-wing paramilitaries, but on the 13th, Dolphus ordered that the somewhat autonomous Austrian militaries shell the socialists. Hundreds were killed and the rebellion had largely been crushed. There were some who held out and fought on in Styria, but they either fled or surrendered by the 16th. The poorly armed and poorly disciplined socialists were therefore easily crushed, but Dolphus still banned the Social Democratic Party afterwards. He then united the Home Guard with the Christian Social Party to form the Patriotic Front, and essentially made Austria a one-party state. But his rule didn't last long. Hitler had become Chancellor in Germany the year before, and the Nazi Party in Austria began to grow in number. Dolphus stood in the way of a potential union between the two nations, so in July 1934, Austrian Nazis assassinated him. This July putsch was, according to Mussolini, planned by Hitler, and he was so angered by it he sent troops to the Austrian border. Kurt Schuschnigg, the new Chancellor of Austria, continued to oppose Nazism. But when Mussolini signed agreements with Hitler, Austria lost its chief ally and in 1938 it was absorbed into Nazi Germany. This episode was supported by The Great Courses Plus, which is a service that lets you learn about everything from science to history to even cooking. There's already thousands of lectures from educators including Ivy League professors and new ones are added every month. For more on this period, I'd recommend the lectures, the Nazi breakthrough and court between Hitler and Stalin. And you can help support my channel and get your free month trial by going to thegreatcoursesplus.com slash or by clicking the link in the description. 